What is up everyone? It is Brick Lover Brad here today with another episode of Ask Brick. Ask Brick is my Q&A show here on social media where you ask me questions down in the comments below about Lego or literally anything at all and I answer it up here on video. We've got a ton of really amazing questions tonight and I'm super excited to get into it. The first question is from Construction Production 4965 Ask Brick, which do you prefer getting pieces in the store at the Pick a Brick Wall or ordering from the online Pick a Brick section? So this is kind of a no brainer for me and I would have to say I like getting the pieces from the store and here is why. So while I know that the selection at the store and on the pick a brick wall is not going to be nearly as good as the thousands upon thousands of Lego pieces that they have online, the reason I like it a little bit more is pretty much solely the price. I have bought a bunch of Lego pick a brick boxes recently and I made several videos on investigating whether or not they're actually worth the price or if I should be ordering my parts on like Bricklink instead. Maybe I should have even checked the pick a brick instead of the Bricklink prices. But from the videos that I posted so far of that series, it has been overwhelmingly positive. In fact, that I'm getting way more value for my money and way more like parts for the same price as I would if I ordered all those parts on Bricklink. The cups I've opened so far have like been like two and a half or four times the value of what I paid for the box in compared to what I would have had to pay for the pieces on Bricklink. So for that reason alone, I would pretty much have to say that the pick a brick at the store is better. So yes, unfortunately the piece selection isn't gonna be as good because the Lego store obviously can't hold thousands upon thousands of unique Lego pieces in many different colors. So if you're a mock builder looking for a very specific piece or like a large quantity of that piece, the the online pick a brick is probably the way to go, but if you're a casual Lego builder like me who every once in a while just likes to go and buy pieces that they know they're not going to build with, the pick a brick wall is definitely the way to do it. Honestly, it's also kind of fun because you never really know which pieces you're going to get. The wall is a mystery every time. Sometimes they have really amazing ones and you're filling like 10 cups or 10 boxes now, and other times the wall is crap and you're not buying anything. So it's a little bit of a hit or miss, but it's still to me a lot of fun and that's what I ultimately would end up having to choose. Speaking of the Lego store, Logan4 asked, Ask Brick, when you worked at the Lego store, is there anyone who works there who has absolutely no interest in Lego, or does everyone that worked there and people who get a job there get it because they like Lego? So I've talked about this one a lot before, but in fact, a lot more people at the Lego store aren't really as all that interested in Lego than you might expect. I've talked about this in past videos, but basically when they're hiring you at the Lego store, they're not hiring you because of your knowledge of the brick or your passion for Lego or passion for building or collecting or whatever it is. They're hiring you for your customer service skills and your ability to actually sell the product. It is ultimately a sales role at the end of the day. Yes, it's beneficial if you have some product knowledge and yes, it's beneficial if you like the brick, but they're just looking for someone who can get the bricks on the shelves and out the door while providing a very positive customer experience at the same time. Whether you're working at the Lego store or a clothing store or the Apple store or a shoe store, whatever the store may be, a vacuum store, as long as you're selling the product, you don't have to have a lot of interest in it. You just have to be good at what you do. That same principle was applied at the Lego store. A lot of my coworkers, in fact, I would almost say two thirds to three quarters of the coworkers had a little bit of interest in Lego, obviously because they worked at the Lego store, they had to possess some interest, but the most part they weren't really big Lego fans and then the other one third or one quarter of us were pretty big Lego fans. We like to collect Lego, we like to buy sets, we were part of the lugs and things like that. Um, so it was beneficial for them because that didn't mean they spent their paycheck at the Lego store every two weeks like the rest of us did sadly. Um, but yeah, they didn't have a ton of interest in Lego other than the basic like, oh, Lego seems pretty cool. They might not have had product knowledge. They might not really buy a lot of Lego sets. Uh, but I wouldn't say they definitely weren't like Lego haters or anything like that because obviously they work at the store. If I don't like fashion, I'm not going to apply to work at a clothing store. If I don't like technology, I'm not going to apply to work at Apple. So obviously they had a little bit of interest at in Lego, but no, I would say for the most part, people just worked at Lego to have a job. Uh, they didn't work there specifically for their passion for Lego. Working there as you're passionate about Lego is a dangerous thing as I learned when I spent all my money I made back at the store. This next question is from Industin UK. Ask Brick, what is your favorite Lego set that you own? Anytime anyone asks me what my favorite thing is, I always find these questions very difficult to answer. Like, what's your favorite Lego set? What's your favorite restaurant? Your favorite place to walk in Toronto? 
I don't know because I have so many favorites, it's really hard for me to narrow down just one. So instead of giving you my all time favorite Lego set today, let's take a look at some of the ones that I like the most. So the Lego City Police Station here from 2008, I don't know if I'd consider it one of my favorite Lego sets ever because I think Lego's released some amazing sets since then, but this one's really special to me so it will always be one of my favorites just because this here was the set that actually got me interested in Lego. My Lego Grand Emporium here which is actually in my Lego City is another set that is one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites because it was actually my first ever Lego modular building and I do think the exterior of the set is really amazing. The interior obviously sucked and a lot of Lego fans don't like it, but the exterior is absolutely amazing. It has so much detail and it's so cool. Of course, two of my other favorite Lego sets would have to be the Lego Titanic as well as the Lego Roman Coliseum. As two of the largest Lego sets that have ever been made, these ones are really cool sets. I had so much fun building both of them. These are definitely the two most expensive Lego sets that I have in my collection so it's really nice to have them on display and to be able to look at them here so I really appreciate them and just the level of detail and I love the realism that went into it so they're really fun to add to the collection. I also really love the Disney Castle here because once again it's just such a cool set and absolutely amazing. The Disney 100 movie camera is also one of my favorite sets just because it is really really cool and I've always wanted Lego to do film cameras. I don't know if I'll say Stitch is one of my favorite sets of all time but definitely my favorite set of 2024 so far. But you guys can see as I move around the Lego room here why I said it's really hard to choose. Because I also really like the Lego Ideas Treehouse here. This was just an amazing set and has so many great memories as a kid. And of course Classic Space has produced some of my favorite sets out there. I love the Galaxy Explorer that we got last year. Just an absolutely amazing set. The Lego White House as well. Oh my god at this point I'm just walking around the Lego room and giving you guys a tour because I basically said every Lego set is my favorite. But it is so hard for me to narrow it down. Another question here about the Lego stores. This one is from Barry Francis. He tells the story about how he was just at the Leicester store square and he noticed that they have replaced the build a minifigure blister packs with the new build a minifigure boxes. So he wants to know, ask Brick, has Lego replaced the Lego build a minifigure blister packs in Canada yet with the build a minifigure boxes? Barry, I think the last time I was at the Lego store was actually on March 1st, 2024. I don't recall, to be honest, if they had replaced everything yet. I knew there wasn't too many Lego minifigure parts parts in the build a minifigure section that I was super interested in so I didn't really spend a lot of time looking around plus there was a lot of kids. I know that they have replaced the pick a brick cups with pick a brick boxes. Actually in fact at the second store I went to the pick a brick boxes hadn't quite been replaced yet. They had the large boxes but still small cups because they have to go through their full inventory. So I don't think I saw the build a minifigure boxes while I was there because I feel like I would have noticed that. I think it must have still been the blister packs because it does make sense that Lego would have to use up the remaining inventory of those packs and they probably probably did have a lot of them so I will have to be on the hunt for the next time I go to the store. I think the build a minifigure blister boxes are just like ridiculous. They're way too oversized for what they actually are. They could be like a third of the size. The blister packs were nice and you could see your minifigures and stuff like that. I like them way more than, I like the pick a brick boxes way more than the cups, but I still like the blister packs more than the actual boxes. But I haven't really seen them yet, so I guess that's making a unfair early assumption. But anyway, Barry, back to your question. Uh, I think they've started replacing the blister packs with the boxes. I just don't know if it's, the change has been rolled out in every Lego store because some of them have to continue using up the stock that they once had. The Brick Ninja 11 70 says, ask Brick, which would you say is the best way to wash Lego bricks? So I've actually answered this question before in a whole separate video. I made a whole how-to video on how to wash Lego bricks, but just to summarize that very briefly, I would say one of the best ways to wash Lego bricks is just with some nice warm water and some Dawn dish soap. Anytime I get used Lego, and I've done this a little bit recently, you guys have seen that video, I basically just dump a bunch of water into my bathtub, put some soap in, and add a bunch of Lego bricks. A lot of the Lego I buy used isn't actually actually too dirty. It's just maybe a little grimy or has some dust from many years of love and play. So I like to give it a wash just to get all of that off and make sure that when I'm actually using it myself, it's not dirty anymore. Getting rid of, you know, any extra hair or like grease or like dirt or anything like that. I just do it that way and it seems to get the job done. I would say though, however, if you had some like really dirty Lego pieces, like extra sticky or like dirty where you have to get the grime it just doesn't come off by like swishing it around in the water like I did in that video. I would say you could do the exact same method but use a toothbrush or something like that to actually scrub the bricks a little bit more instead of just swishing them around. When I wash Lego by no means am I actually scrubbing each individual brick because as I said I'm just doing it to get the basic like dirt off. I'm not trying to make them brand new or make them perfect and pristine. Uh, so the method I do 
do work well. I've also seen people use things like the laundry machine or a dishwasher, put the bricks in a mesh bag and run it on the cycle. I personally have never done that just because I can barely wash my clothes and my dishes without using those machines for Lego bricks either. I still don't know how to use them. It doesn't take me that long to just fill up the bathtub and dump all the Lego bricks in because I'm not doing it very often and I'm not doing it in very large quantities. I can see why you use Lego stores that sell like used Lego like crazy. Would want to do that though because it saves them a lot of time and probably a lot of money uh, just getting it done that way. I've just never experimented with it so I don't want to say it and do that here on video. Uh, but there are plenty of different options. And in terms of keeping Lego around my room clean, um, basically what I do is just use a, again I made a video on this, but I've used a little vacuum, I use a Swiffer, and I just go around every once in a while and dust everything because you don't need to like clean sets on the shelves here like with soap and water because for the most part they're just, they just get a little dusty. Not too bad. Even this one isn't that bad. So as long as you keep up the regular maintenance of the Lego sets, you should be good to go. You only need to clean your whole collection, but anytime you get used ones, sometimes just a little soap and water is perfect and all you need. Lego City Star Wars fan as asked Brick, when you make your own custom Lego sets, do you sell them on Bricklink? If you do, how do you make the instruction manual for everyone to follow the steps? So for starters, when I make my own custom Lego sets, it's mostly just for me. They're mostly just mocks and they're for my Lego City. It's nothing too crazy. I don't even actually know the last time I built a mock or anything like that. I will say though that back in the day, I did actually used to make custom Lego sets and try and sell them. Spoiler alert, they weren't that good. I made them many, many years ago now. I'll see if I can and try and find some old clips and old footage of them but basically what I would do is build a little set put it in a bag design the packaging and try and sell it and I would list it on my Bricklink store I think I still have some of them probably deep in storage somewhere but I did actually sell a few of them a few not very many a few to some loyal subscribers uh, but I didn't even do instructions for them basically what I did was because I'm a youtuber I made how-to videos I would add a little QR code on the inside of the instructions or, or like the inside of the packaging where you could scan it and follow along while I built it um, I haven't made any Lego sets in years or like actually done anything to sell or because I just build it myself I'm not designing it on the store but if I were to make custom Lego sets and sell them I would probably use a program called studio or I think some call it stud IO which is basically kind of like the Lego digital design program that's no longer around anymore where you could build Lego sets on the computer and actually get step-by-step -step instructions how to do it I think the software now is officially supported by Bricklink so it actually works and I think that's probably what a lot of the designers use for like the Bricklink AFOL designer program and stuff like that. They build the sets on the computer and then they get detailed instruction manuals how to do it. I think that's also probably where a lot of models from Rebrickable come from. I've only ever built one Rebrickable model but the instructions were super easy to follow and definitely computer generated and not photographed. So I'm assuming that they use that kind of method there to do it. Uh, as I said, I've never done it so I can't really speak to the platform or anything like that. But one of these days I should just kind of explore it and test it out because I think it would be really fun to experiment with. But yeah, as of this time I don't really sell custom Lego sets, but who knows? We'll have to see what the future brings. Speaking of selling stuff, the next question is from Jackie Hopkins 931 asks, Brick, I noticed you have a Lego blanket in your room. Is it for sale? And if so, how much? So I actually have two Lego blankets in my room. The first one is this Lego movie blanket that hangs over my Lego city of Emmett and Benny. This one I got many, many years ago as a blanket and obviously put it on my wall as home decor. And the second blanket that I do have in my Lego collection is the more recent Lego gift with purchase. This one's actually folded up right now in my Bricklink room uh, and unfortunately no, neither of these blankets are for sale. One of them as you can see is used for Lego art and I don't want to get rid of that and the other is a blanket that I've actually used. Sometimes when I'm watching TV I will curl up with that one. The reason it's in my Bricklink room right now is because I do have some other non-Bricklink things in there like you guys know on some of the shelves uh, and I also just need a place to store it. It is a very colorful blanket and very passionate for Lego so sometimes I don't want to keep it in my living room because it doesn't really match the colors I have in there so when I'm not using it and because I have other blankets out there I just fold it up and put it in my Lego room to get it out of the way. I don't show that room on camera a lot so that's why I'm not like too worried about it looking ugly in there because you guys don't ever really see it but I guess you would have seen it in one of the recent vlogs or the Bricklink vlog so that's why you are asking about it but no unfortunately it is not for sale. It is my blanket and I don't want to part with it uh, but if you do any of you or anyone in the future does have a question of whether or not something I've shown on a video is for sale you can just check out my Bricklink store. I will leave a link down in the description below so you 
you guys can check it out. If you go on the store looking for something in particular and you don't see it, it's because A, I've already sold it, or B, the most likely scenario, I never was actually for sale. 99% of the things I do here around YouTube and around Lego are just for my own personal benefit and my hobby. It's not for sale or anything like that. And then the other 1% is things that I do and actually list for sale and stuff. So I would say for the most part, if you have to ask if it's for sale, it's probably not because unless I explicitly say like in a Brickling vlog or something like that, you can just assume it is for my personal collection. All right. And with that, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Ask Brick. Thank you all so much for all your questions. I really had a lot of fun answering them. And thank you guys for sticking with me through the end to watch me answer them all up. And of course, if you guys do have questions that you would like answered in future episodes of Ask Brick, please don't forget to leave them down in the comments below. And I promise I will get to them. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here in the next one.